Hello everybody and welcome to this playthrough for Master Division for the qualifying round and qualifying round win here for the Valley of the Dead tournament in Golf Clash the game video sponsored by Golf Clash and Playdemic make sure that you do hit the thumbs up button also subscribe to the channel and turn on the notifications you can get the ultimate tournament guides the best guides on the market for pro expert and master by going to patreon link to patreon and our guides is directly in the description down below you can always Follow the info box on the right hand side to get the club distance adjustment, elevation adjustment, also what ball and club type I suggest you to play with. Have in mind that those are all suggestions and you don't have to follow it if you don't want to, but there is always a plan behind it. So, let's go to hole number one. Hole number one, we're gonna start by showing you a free to play option here because we're gonna have a free to play option and then we're gonna, ha gonna have a blast in the guide. But I want to cover us up with on every part four to have a possibility to play with a free to play option if we want to. Bullseye by the rough line, we use six top spin, three left spin, so you can play this shot with Apocalypse level five up to level eight without doing any changes. Max plus 10, then we go with max OP, slow needle. A great left here is still gonna be fine, that's the same with a great right and obviously a perfect. You can see that we bounce in between the two bunkers, so even with a great left we're not even close to get into the bunker on the left. Now, getting up to 425-ish is kind of what we want to, because then we're gonna play a rock check with our B-52. You can see that I'm moving way, way up, you can see that I'm getting up all the way there. To have that first rock as a reference because we are not really getting a plus yardage anywhere else that we can use as a reference. Four bars of backspin always with the ball guideline to hold, very important. And we're gonna aim on the fring, sorry, on the green to make sure that we have a flat bounce instead of bouncing before the green to bounce on that uphill slope, which is a little bit tricky. So plus one equals 48% slider with a 20% over adjustment, power three ball settings. Center the ball, hit perfect, and this ball is most likely going to drop. The problem with the layup here and the free to play option is the fact that we can get dead bounces on the drive. We are not getting the rollout. Then unfortunately, the only thing we do have as a reference there is 409 yards equals 68% slider with a 20% elevation. And that's why the blast is going to be far superior going with the, the free to play option here. So what we're gonna do here now is that we're going to just take a look at the option number one as it will be. And we're gonna just close down that one and get the drive first because the drive is everything. The second shot is fairly easy. It's all about getting the all about getting the ball up the fairway so we do have a wedge towards the pin. And again, having a wedge with almost dead uh, straight um, wind is going to be much much easier than having a short iron that is going to be with almost a dead on straight crosswind. So now we're gonna take a look at this one once I just change the ball which is gonna be there and now we're gonna take a look at that one. So the drive, NMT, no movement. This is an older slide and I'm having the privilege to use a friend's replay here which I'm very grateful for. So NMT, don't touch the target until it's time to adjust the rings. Max plus 10 is the adjustment. <laughs> And we are always going to play with uh, push up to max, regardless what win we're gonna have. Max top spin, and we're gonna use some left left spin as well. So max top spin, and one and a half bar of side spin to the left. 1.2 ball of curl to the left, so just a little bit of a gap between the ring and uh, out the complete ball outside. And we do want to hit, you know, some type of a minor grade or a perfect. And here is the problem here, because wind angles and wind strength can all have an effect here. So we need to have that in mind, and the rough is definitely in play. So getting up there to 483. Now, if you're going to play the EB school, we estimate plus 5 to be the correct elevation to use. And the reason we do that is due to the fact that we're playing an uphill approach. But the best way to do is to play max top spin to roll the ball to pin. When it comes to max topspin, we're estimating uh, with the end level eight 
it's actually just going to have a check here uh, to uh, um, so the max top spin is estimated to be minus 50 percent uh, with then obviously slider power three ball settings so you do the eb school but using minus 50 percent instead that's an estimation have that in mind so i would recommend to go in practice to maybe get yourself a, a try or two to get yourself the wedge correctly before you're going in live again the blast is definitely the more most suggested one here but if you don't have the possibility to play with a power five win zero ball then definitely the layup is you know a decent chance Hole number two, and I will give you two options. One, we're gonna play an aggressive rough bomb, which is absolutely money, but great left is bunker. So we're gonna start with 2.2 a backspin and 0.7 bars of left spin. Now we're looking to have the bullseye just by the very, very edge of the rough with the ball guideline to be on the right side of the pin. Sorry, left side of the pin, obviously, not right side. So now with the adjustment, we're going to adjust one to one with the rock level nine. We're going to play minimum distance with a 25% over adjustment power three ball settings, which is one to one. Play with a power two or power three ball. A power zero or power one ball will make you go in between clubs so that you can't do. You can see here that I'm adding a little bit of right curl. And the reason I do that is because that is a tweak based on a specific wind angle we have on this shot. Because obviously on a part three, you need to make wind angle tweaks or you will miss more than you will drop it. So you can still play without curling any type of angle and you will drop it all the time in one angle, but you will miss it in the other two or like in, in the others. So have that in mind when you're playing here, but very, very good chance in my opinion for a drop. What I'd like us to do for option number two is to start with whatever power five ball you may want or have. So we are going to have in complete minimum distance with the right side of the yellow ring by the rough line. Then I'm changing to a centurion and playing four and a half bar uh, backspin and 0 0.3 bars of side spin to the right. That will see that the ball guideline is going to be massively to the left, but the wind and the slope on that fairway will push the ball right. Max plus 10 power two ball settings is what we are using here. And even in the highest wind, we can still play this shot without going in between clubs. Perfect ball. And you will see the ball bounce nicely on the fairway, giving ourselves room for a great right or a great left. And this offers a chance for a free to play option here with um, somewhat a chance of an hole in one. But to just summarize it, the rough bump is miles, miles better in terms of getting for an hole in one. I'm saying that because that's the reason why we are having a rough bump, even though it is aggressive. But at the same time, a bounce over from the left here, or if you back up and play from the right, will always uh, get yourself into a situation where you will be getting a birdie as minimum but you will still have a chance for a hole in one you can also play with a free to play ball if you want to so you can play it very conservative or you can play it aggressive it all depends on your play style and what you want to do hole number three we're gonna play a kind of a tough drive but the second shot is then going to be absolutely money six and a half bar top spin three right spin half of the fourth ring on the fairway with apocalypse level eight then one fifth of the fourth ring on the fairway with apocalypse level seven and then blue ring to the right by the rough line with apocalypse level five and level six adjust max plus 10 then we use outside wall curl to the right and when Apocalypse level seven and sorry with level six, seven, and eight, we're using four rings of overpower. When it comes to Apocalypse level five, we need to go with five rings because it has less topspin available. So we get the ball up there on the fairway, and it may look scary for a great right, but trust me, I've hit both great right, great left in practice to make sure that we do get into the correct spot. Now for the second shot, we're gonna use the yardage that we're getting for on the drive. So 387 yards equals 27% slider. But first we need to add some spin here. 2.2 top spin and two and a half bars of left spin. And this is based on, uh, this is based on uh, a perfect ball drive. And we're gonna have the ball guideline go 
through the hole uh, with top of the red ring by the rough line. Minus 20% elevation is, uh, sorry, minus 20% is the elevation here. The thing here though with this shot is that with a perfect and with a great left, this shot is absolutely money. But if you do hit great right, which I do in the video, you will 100% miss on the right hand side. A couple of things to think about when it comes to uh, this hole or especially this second shot approach is that if you don't have the ball guide lying through the hole you will fall short of pin and also if you do have a drive that is a great left you need to add more left spin to get yourself into the funnel and if you do have a great right drive you need to add less left spin to get yourself into the funnel a couple of little things to think about to make this uh, make this shot probably one of the better albatross chances we have in the game. Hole number four is an old play, a very simple play, but I remember having some inconsistency with before, but not now, because now I've learned that there isn't just one wind angle. So now we do have some tweaks based on the wind angles, which will get ourselves much more frequent drops on this hole. 3 top spin, 3 left spin, ball guideline 0.2 hole, or just short of hole it will be. And then we shall adjust. And we're gonna adjust max plus 5 power 3 ball settings here. And you can see with this wind angle, where you do have the basically the line pointing towards the, the middle of the 3 bushes. And then we're just gonna play without any curl whatsoever. If we would be having the... Uh, the yeah, the line or the wind pointing more right, we would have to add some left curl. If we have the wind pointing more left, we're gonna have to add some right curl just to compensate for that. Again, you don't have to use wind angle tweaks if you don't want to, but there is, some, there is obviously a reason why we're using it and I will talk more about that on uh, the hole number seven, another part three that comes up later in this playthrough. Hole number seven, we need a side spin three ball. You don't have to play with a power one, could be a power zero, could be a power three, just that it has side spin three to help you simplify this setting up with side spin. Hole number five, and we're gonna play with a Bryson ball if we do have that possibility. If you don't have the Bryson ball, don't be alarmed. You can still play a similar shot here. We just need to make some minor modifications. But the idea here is to get the ball to get as close to green possible for a wedge. So we're gonna start at max with whatever club we play. I'm choosing Thor's hammer, but because it does give me a lot of topspin. I would choose Thor's hammer level seven and Thor's hammer level eight over Apocalypse level seven and level eight. But if I do have Apocalypse 7 or 8, but only Thor's Hammer 6, I would be using the Apocalypse level 7 or level 8. Still with the same structure, start at max, max top spin, ball guideline centered down the fairway, and play max plus 10. What I do like here to do is that I would love to add one ring overpower with Thor's Hammer level 8, two rings overpower with Thor's Hammer level 7, and then four rings of overpower with Thor's hammer level six. If you do play with Apocalypse level seven, level eight, you add one ring of overpower there as well. Apocalypse level six, you add four rings of overpower just as the Thor's hammer level six. Something to just have in mind. Second shot is going to be played EB school with a 20% elevation. So stretch out to max to judge what type of club distance, uh, sorry, judge where the pin is related to a maxed out ball guideline. So put your club into max and check where the pin stands and then judge based on that uh, what type of um, adjustment you shall do. In this video, I play 60% slider, 20% elevation, P5 numbers, but we should more play 55% slider instead based on the swirly into the right. To have that said, I just wanted to say to you that once again, you don't have to play with a Bryson ball here. You can play with any other top spin boost ball as well. Just that it is top spin boost 3 in my opinion. So top spin boost 3 can be found with, with other types of ball. Let's say for an example that you play with a power 3 top spin boost 3 ball instead of a power 5 as doing here. The thing that we would like to do then is that still keep the same type of ID with adjusting to ma adjust from max position, max plus 10, but then we apply one ring extra overpower based on the amount of power. So 
power 5 topspin boost 3 ball bryson ball here we're using one ring of overpower with or samuel level 8 so if having power 3 which has a difference of 2 in power then we play 3 rings of overpower instead so in that way you can still get the same type of outcome by getting the ball to approximately the same type of distance and still have an easy way of using whatever top spin boost you, ball you want to spend. Obviously, there is other balls with more top spin boosts and stuff like that. Then it's always recommended to add to do a practice or two to get the feel of how the ball will roll with that type of ball. For hole and number six, we're gonna come to, in my opinion, the toughest of them all to drop here in the qualifying round. So I'm gonna start by adding max top spin and one bar of side spin to the right. Ball guideline to be centered down the fairway, very important. You will notice that I do play with a monster truck ball, which is a power five wind five ball. You don't have to play with that if you don't want to. You can play with a luminary. You can also play with any type of wind four power five ball as well. Push up to max. And then we shall not apply any overpower for Apocalypse level 7 and level 8. When it comes to Apocalypse level 6, we need to have a little bit of overpower. And that's obviously goes for Apocalypse level 5 as well. So we estimate one ring of overpower for Apocalypse 6, two and a half rings for Apocalypse level 5. Second shot is going to be played with no side spin at all. We're just going to use top spin. And here it is important to always try to mirror the landing position, but also the ball guidelines position. Because we do want to aim at the left side of the cup to get this ball to drop as we want. So in this instance, I'm using 4.5 bars of top spin. And you will notice that I do have the blue ring basically just by the rough line. With ball guideline you can see they're going left side of the cup now plus 15 yards you can see that right so what i do here is i i always put in my uh, in my calculator max plus 30 power two ball settings and that's going to be from a plus 10 so in this instance i play max plus 30 power two and adding 0 0.5 rings to get the correct adjustment. Always the base of plus 10 is what I'm doing, then adding or subtracting based on what type of plus yardage I do have on my initial landing spot. Dead center for an albatross, but have in mind, hole number six is for sure the toughest of the par fives and the holes in this qualifying round to drop. Tough win on hole number seven, but I'm very, very pleased with this approach because it is a simple one with a good chance for a drop. Four backspin and four left spin, and we're looking to have the inner ring by the rough line with the left side of the yellow ring by the sand trap line, ball guideline to go through the hole. So start by adding a spin, and then you should be finding that spot easily. Now in this video, this is a wind angle that requires just one little click of right curl just to have that in mind medium distance with a 30 percent over adjustment power three ball settings is what we're using here so center the ball then i'm adding just a little, little bit of click of right curl there to my shot and then trying to hit perfect a great left and a great right has been hit here without any problems clipping the rough with a perfect ball here having a very very good chance and had a high uh, drop rate with the suggested tweaks and also with the suggested adjustment here again you don't have to play with wind angle tweaks if you don't want to but obviously then you will miss in some angles and you will drop it in some the wind angles are there to help you get uh, a more frequent drop on the par three so here on hole number seven a good chance needs a side spin four ball where i do feel that a king slayer could work as well if you do <coughs> if you do have a low wind you can play with any type of power ball here also important to be said so even if you have a power zero side spin four ball that's bo that's a ball you can use as well Hole number eight, we're gonna play an NMT. No movement, don't touch the target until it's time to adjust the rings. Max top spin, one left spin, and we're gonna adjust for max plus 10 power five ball settings. Have in mind that those of you playing with Apocalypse level six, 
are going to have to play with a little bit of overpower. We estimate two rings of overpower to be what we need. Apocalypse level 5 uses needs to play with three and a half rings of overpower. Unfortunately, that's just how it is when playing with a bit lower level driver here in Master. Perfect ball. And the ball here now will roll to two types of places. One, we're getting the rollout like this and we're getting up to around 430 to 435 yards. That's kind of what we want to because the second shot becomes a little bit easier. But if we do a rollout and have a short drive, which means that we're going to get to 420 to 425 approximately, then it's going to be a little bit tougher when it comes to the second shot. But first we take if the drive goes as we want to. Then we're gonna go uh, to do a start of the back frame check, which is plus three here in the video. Two right spin always and one and a half bar backspin with the back frame check. So one and a half bar backspin with the back frame check, very important to have that in mind. So from plus three, then we're gonna play this one 41% slider with a 15% over adjustment power five ball settings. Ball guideline should be through the hole, very important, as otherwise you have a risk of falling short, unfortunately. Center the ball and try to hit perfect. And have in mind here that you can play this shot with a luminary as well, and don't have to spend a Ryder Cup ball if you don't have any, for, uh, for an example. Only difference there if you play with a luminary is that you're going to have to increase the adjustment with 0.1 to compensate for the higher wind. Now, let's say we do have a short drive, then we're going to take a look at what we're going to do then. Then we're going to do a pin check. You can see here that I have plus 6 as a pin check with my bullseye and falcon level 8. So from a plus 6, we're going to play this 66% slider with a 15% over adjustment. But the difference is also going to be the spin. We're going to use 1.8 bars of backspin when it comes to shorter drives. So once again, if you do a pin check, we're going to play 1.8 backspin and two right spin. If we do have a back frame check, we're gonna play one and a half bar back spin and two right spin. And the reason we're gonna do that is because the long, the shorter your shot are, then the short, the, the shorter the ball guy line are. So you need to have that in mind. So that's why we're compensating like that. Right that pin for beautiful eagle here as well. And hole number eight feels very, very solid when it comes to this approach. On hole number 9, it is very important that you don't play with a shamrock ball. Play with any other ball that do have power 5, side spin 2 minimum, and then power, uh, win 0. So we're gonna start with max position, and then bullseye by the rough line. In 16 miles per hour, I will be playing with 5 bars of top spin and 2 bars of side spin to the right. Adjust max plus 10, and then we shall push up to max. We will always push this... Uh, push our target up to max here because we are we do want to make the drive as simple as possible and only tweak the spin based on the wind strength 0 0.8 ball of curl to the right and max overpower try to hit perfect great left great right will still be fine and that's why i'm not trying any power hooks or a power slice as i don't really see the point when a great ball to the left or right will still going to be ending up approximately where we want to so what do we want then? You can see that we clipped the rough with the second bounce. You may be wondering, is that the thing that we do want? Yes, it is. We do want to give ourselves a play with a short turn every single time. Because the fact is, if we try to go for green, you might succeed once uh, to get the ball to green, and but you might miss 10 times after that. So to give ourselves a consistent way of approaching the albatross all the time without having to deal with getting into the sand or into the rough most of the times, we do clip the rough and roll out for a um, shot with our falcon or short iron. Now we do a pin check, right? So pin check is plus five with our falcon here. Okay, sorry, plus four, not plus five. Then we're gonna apply two and a half bar backspin. And we're gonna apply two and a half bar backspin every single time and remove that left spin that I'm trying to work with as a start. Two and a half bar backspin ball guideline to the hole. Have in mind the falcon eight has 4.5 bars, uh, 4, 4 ball guideline. So therefore, I'm aiming directly at cup. So for a plus four pin check, we play 56% slider with a 10% over adjustment power five ball setting. So this is with Falcon eight and with Thorn nine. So have in mind that if you play with a Falcon seven 
or Hornet level 9, you need to add a 4% slider to the suggested here. So, perfect ball. Ball bounce on the fairway, lovely. Right at pin for a beautiful albatross. Again, I'm not saying that this is going to be easy to get an albatross here, but playing a consistent or somewhat consistent drive to get to the same spot or to similar spot all the time, we increase the opportunity to get a couple of more albatrosses than trying to push for green every single time. Thank you so much everybody for watching this play 3-4 Master Division with tournament win for the qualifying round. Yes, there is a lot of drops here in this playthrough. Unfortunately, the replays for hole number 3 with the drops that I have are just messy. Therefore, we have no drop there. But otherwise, there would be drops on every single hole. I feel very pleased. If you do want to get a part of all the tweaks and the details, you get our Master Guide. The Ultimate Tournament Guides, which are the best guides on the market. Join more than 1000 unique Master Players and compete uh, to the top. Link is directly in the description down below. Video sponsored by Gold Clash and Playdemic. Thank you so much for watching and good luck in your Gold Clash game.